I'm making a game in Minecraft. Uh, what? It's an action RPG with choice matters. You, 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 already, you already said all this, man. What? Come on, dude. I'm, I'm trying to sleep. Okay. I guess you don't need to see the seamless dialogue system that's coded to minimize player failure and expandable to allow for multiple dialogue trees and variable-based decision-making. No, it's fine. I'll go. Hey, I mean, dude, that that sounds really cool. I'm just I'm just trying to sleep. I got a kid. He... Yeah, okay. I'll come back later. <sighs> Honey? Where where's Gary? I need to take I need to take him to school, hunt. I'm making a game Whoa. in Minecraft. Is anybody there? Hello? Guys? So, I'm making a game in Minecraft, as you've probably gathered. Today I want to talk about dialogue systems. NPCs and dialogue in Minecraft are actually incredibly diverse. You might not think it, but we have insane fully animated NPCs like this to more classic iterations like Dave and Carol. Both have their pros and cons, but I'm going to be showing you guys something more in the middle. Our dialogue system needs to be an outlet for decision making. Ideally, our dialogue will allow our player to interact with the people of the world we're building while creating lasting impact with their decisions. Of course, there's something to be said about invisible decision making. I do want to include a good amount of invisible choices, but that's a conversation for a future devlog on level design. As for our dialogue, I want to do something that's a mix of text and voice similar to that of the Elder Scrolls. This sort of system is easy for the players to understand with everything right there, while still allowing for variable decisions. Variable decisions mean the player being able to unlock hidden dialogue options if they, say, have a secret item, or maybe if a stat is high enough. So I believe I've mostly done that. So we did comment of the week in the final True Survival devlogs. We're going to be doing the same for Project Riptide. Odd Tomato asks on the last devlog, what was your inspiration to do this? Well, uh, as I've said there, it's hard to say specifically, uh, but certain RPGs and different games uh, have all kind of come together to make that inspiration. I'd say games like Stanley Parable, Breath of the Wild, Skyrim, and even Minecraft Adventure Maps, like Sabogi's uh, Doomed. That, that stuff is so good, and all these games are some of the favorite ones I've ever played. One of the things I want to bring into our game from there is just the the ability to emphasize gameplay that isn't combat. We're going to have combat, don't get me wrong, this is an action RPG. But, uh, combat doesn't have to be the only game mechanic, and I, I want to make sure to bring that uh, and sort of the um, just player interaction uh, into what we're doing here. But yeah, enough of that, let's get started on showing you guys some of the progress we have with the dialogue system. So, we're over here in the development world. We have next to me a villager who we're going to test the dialogue system on, do a quick little demonstration, but also afterwards I want to go over some of the design requirements uh, needed uh, and some of the things that went into designing it the way it is. So let's just take a look right here. If we right click this villager, dims our area, bling, brings up the dialogue system here. You think I committed the murder, right? It can just be any bit of dialogue. And then we have a bunch of options here, and then we click the option, whatever, whichever one we want. If we hit exit, it exits this, and then we can move around again. If I go back in, uh, we can't move, but it keeps us centered uh, towards the villager. Uh, let's exit again. If I were to go behind the villager, he turns towards us, right? Okay, so there's a lot of different things going on here, but let's go ahead and click one of the options. So let's say I hit yes. Uh, then we return our yes dialogue tree, which we can, which this is just a substitute for. We hit no, returns our no dialogue tree, and then we can chain these together, right? Uh, however we want. If I click this hidden option, you hear that sound. That's happening because it's locked, right? So whenever we hit an option that is not supposed to be activated, we'll get that sound. So we can detect and return failure. One of the issues with uh, using the Minecraft text box for your dialogue system is that players can go up, scroll up, and just start hidden options, right? Uh, so we had to actually accommodate for that. So if I'm out of dialogue now, and if I start hitting different things, if I hit yes, no, or hidden option, or even exit, 
we get that uh, failure sound, right? Nothing is happening. Nothing. We don't get the yes or no return. Uh, it's all covered. That's uh, because we're using a scoreboard to detect where we are at in the dialogue tree, and these options will only activate if they're clicked while the score is set to a certain state, right? So if we hit yes, we get the yes, hit no, we get the no, um, and then hit an option, failure, exit, works perfectly. But if I hit exit again, uh, nothing happens. The same thing would happen if I scrolled up to an earlier instance of that dialogue. All, all failures, nothing's happening, right? And that's exactly what we want. That is exactly what we want in a dialogue system uh, when we're making a, something big like this in Minecraft. Because uh, if we can reduce uh, player error, that means we can get uh, a much wider breadth of audience, and I'm really excited for that. Uh, one of the things I do like is that it kind of darkens the background, so we get this background on our text, uh, so it's a lot easier to see, right? Uh, if I were to hover like that, just point it at the villager, uh, then bring up the text, uh, it's has this completely natural black background, and it always focuses in on the NPC. Hello, welcome back to another World Building Wednesday. I know you guys are excited. We are inside Blockbench. If you didn't know, Blockbench is a 3D modeling program that can be used to create mobs, blocks, items, things of that nature. Uh, here we have a custom modeled barrel. Um, basically, I wanted to just show you guys this real quick as well as um, start a discussion. What do you guys think about custom modeled blocks inside Minecraft? We're definitely going to have things like custom modeled armor and weapons and, and whatnot, right? But blocks in particular, like using furniture and just custom props in general, well, what are your thoughts on that? I know for some it can be a bit jarring, right? I, I personally think it can look alright if used sparingly, if we don't go too overboard and make sure to keep a generally blocky feel. But other than that, I think it can look pretty good, right? Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. This is just a quick example of what could uh, could be happening in the project. Wanted to get some feedback on that before we go too far. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for playing all the stuff. I hope you guys do enjoy, and I will catch you later. Bye-bye.